I see you shivering. With Anne Tissa. Say it, say it. But, but maybe the rain. <laughs> so I'll remove the cause. What about the symptoms? What about the symptoms? But not the symptom. <laughs> Love that okay. movie. So many, so many great teenage memories. I just was listening to this all week long, for God's sakes. I don't know. You know, you just keep listening to songs. Yeah, yeah. Like that more, more, more song. I don't know what. <laughs> Andre, Andre, a true connection. Yes, everything. Everything I told you is off the top of my head, but yes, very true. Yeah, so Michael and I were talking, right? And I sent him a DM and I sent him like voice messages, like all, like millions of them all day long. And he's probably like, whatever. So one of them I said, Mo, 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 how do you like? So all of a sudden he writes back within two seconds. You can't wiki this shit. I, I cannot. Oh, this was so and so. Uh, she did this. Um, she was also a porn star. I'm like, what? He like knew everything. Michael's back. Uh, Andrea True. Andrea True was a. Yeah. Porno actress in the seventies. Porno. Um, my uh, uh, her favorite performance in my eyes. Uh, she was in a movie called uh, Smash, which was a parody of Mash, and oh, her boy. and and her and Annie Sprinkles had a nice little scene together. You Annie know what, what I mean? You know what I mean? Annie Sprinkles was her name. Um, had a nice scene together, uh, gentlemen. You know what I mean? Um, but she went down to, I want to say Jamaica or Aruba or somewhere and did a, a movie, did a film, Get but, but so whatever the, the law was down there, you couldn't, if you went there and worked, you had to spend some of the money you made on the Island, on the yeah. Island. So yeah. she hired a band and went, rented some studio time and recorded more, more, more as a lark. And it became a number one hit. And she wrote it. I don't know if she wrote it or somebody else did, but I mean, she was an inspiring singer. I mean, you know, Don Johnson started as a singer. He wanted to be a singer. Joe Pesci was a singer for God's sake. So everybody, um, Everybody's I've got a, a, a basement. I've got a basement full of albums of people that, you know, Leonard Nimoy and Richard Chamberlain and William Shatner, Maybe not. <laughs> you know, and people that people thought, you know, they could be singers now, you know, Bruce Willis, Don Johnson. You know, everybody has Kevin now. Bacon. Actually, Kevin Bacon and his Kevin brother, Bacon right? can sing. Yeah, yeah, yeah the Bacon yeah, brothers. Yeah, yeah, they're he's he's got he's talented. But for every Kevin right. Bacon, there's a I don't know. Can't think of someone. It's horrible. Who? I don't know. I'm trying <laughs> to think of someone. I don't want to insult anybody that's still alive in case they ever want to do. Wait something a minute, now, Mike. I don't mean to interrupt you, but Sylvester, right, was like. um a trans, uh, well, a, a transvestite, but actually now she would be considered like transgender, right? Um, transgender. Yeah. What was the song that she sang? That Sylvester song. Do you remember? It was like seventies hit. But I thought that I was. Knew. I thought that's who sang that song. Was that um, Ma Ma Ma? How do you like? But what is the Sylvester song now? I'm trying to think of a. It was a disco hit, right? Big disco hit. I think so. Yeah. And what was the David not with David Naughton song? David Naughton making it. Making, making it. it. I'm solid gold. I've got the goods. <laughs> I made a movie. It was really good. I'm a werewolf. Yes, yes. He was also the Dr. Pepper guy. Yeah. Yeah. He was David Kessler, an American werewolf in London, directed by John Landis, who I think is a legendary director, whom we don't hear from much often, but such eclectic, such like originality. I mean, it goes from one type of different genre to like the Blues Brothers. To, I mean, he's, yeah. he was just amazing, you know? It's so sad about that Vic Morrow thing, uh, Vic Morrow. And, yeah, I mean, Twilight I, Zone. Yeah. I, I, know, I hate to bring it up, but. And you were the one that told me Jennifer Jason Leigh was um, his daughter. And I dad. Yeah, yeah. That's so sad. Big daughter. Uh, but we haven't been on in a while. So, uh, hi, how's everybody doing? Uh, we're going hi, over uh, 1977. Yes, the end of October of 1977. And as a hint, I broke out my Smoking the Bandit poster. Oh, yes. 
pulled it out of the yeah pulled it out of the archives because I think oh uh, you should get that frame. I like oh, that. I, oh, I, oh my god, I love oh, that. I've got so, I've got a million posts. I, I framed them all. I, I, oh, I, that's awesome, oh, Mike. I can't think of his name. He's on Facebook. I want to say Mark. Maybe it's Mark Fritzgibbons, but he's got he, he has like a house that's like all walls, and yeah. he has he's I bet he's got a hundred framed posters, and they're different. You know, different size posters, lobby cards, and they're not in any particular order i mean they're different sizes everywhere but they look good you know here's a french connection this and here's that yeah, yeah right. he's got yeah i've got now, um, that poster you have is it like from is it back in the day that you got that yeah, or this is, uh, yeah, yeah. no it's an original yeah. I, I worked i worked at the theater that got it um that had the movie Mike, we, you should have that frame. Forever. I, like i said i've got so much stuff I, I, i'd like the frame right now i've got oh, in my man. office i've got joelle's storybook Joel's legend, legend. Uh, or storyboard. I mean, I've got a, a frame scene somebody did of Jaws at night. I've got the uh, 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 Goat Boys uh, art. Uh, he did a, a Jaws image of the back of the Orca with the crushed Narragansett can in the oh. wake, and then a crushed Styrofoam cup in the wake. And oh. I had I had Dreyfus sign that. And then I've got my Jaws Fest poster, and then I've got the the big three, the three guys looking through the, yeah. The big arms, three yeah. big arms. When Juanita met me, I had so many frames in my house and stuff hanging up, and she was like, "No, no, just a little bit here, a little bit there." So that's what okay. I I'm a, I'm a big huge. That's like one of my, one of my faves. That movie, right? I love Burt Reynolds in that. I love the I love that Eastbound and Down song. <laughs> it's a funny friggin' movie. Um, Jackie Gleason is freaking. Funny as hell in that movie. I mean, come on. I never knew him because I was like young and I'm like, I, I didn't know he was on the honeymooners. But oh yeah, honeymooners and Jack Gleason. That show. was, I mean, the whole his whole part was just that's what I, I look back and I see. And then John uh Conradi um <laughs> gets me a picture of uh, Bert and send it to me. I have it framed and I love it. So oh. if I had that poster, I have that in the living room, man. That's an awesome poster. I'm loving that. I'll, I'll treat you with my Burt Reynolds laugh. My, ha, ha. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> I can do that. I yeah, love it. I love it. We played it forever in the summer. And um, I got this because I worked for AMC at the time. And they used what was called insert posters. They were 14 by 36. Yeah. A uh, little heavier cardboard. And normally they would send those. But in the in 1977, uh, Universal split from National Screen Service and went to a company called uh, Donald Veldy Company. And all they would do is one sheets and lobby cards. Damn, so, Michael, you got like a you got like a degree yeah. in posters. <laughs> yes. So <laughs> when this, so we would order these, and it would kill me. But my manager would actually cut one into the size of fourteen by thirty six. So it'd be just like, you know, just the title and going down and it was horrible, but I would grab all the ones he didn't cut up. So that's why I have a nice fully intact uh, from the Twin Bays Theater in Tampa, Florida, a Smokey and the Bandit. I'm so annoyed right now. I'm like, that thing, should, that's a jewel. That's a gem. That should be in a nice gold frame or something, you know, like, and like, be like, oh, I mean, I mean, come on. Why, well, thank you, pretty lady. <laughs> well, thank you, pretty lady. Give me a Diablo sandwich to Dr. Pepper and make it fast. I'm in a goddamn hurry. Yes. Oh, I know that movie back and backwards and forwards. <laughs> I swear when I get home, I'm gonna slap your mama. <laughs> yeah. In the and it, it kind of resurrected Jackie Gleason's career where yeah. he did a, lot of, did a lot of other films. His last Toys. film was Yeah. Yeah. With uh, Billy Van Zandt's wife, uh Teresa Ganzel. She playing, wasn't uh, you asked. Yeah, you asked. Yes. Not that's, US. yes. Oh my God, no way. It's US. What you doing? US. Billy Van Zandt's ex wife was. No, his US. wife, his new wife. His, his new wife was. Tracy that was her. Manziel. Yeah, the one he just married last month, I think. Yeah. Yeah. She's oh. on Facebook. She's on Facebook. She's super nice. Super nice lady. 
that whole movie, every time she said that, I would just fucking die. You yeah, like, ass. You ass. But um, uh, Jackie Gleason's last movie was a movie called Nothing in Common with Tom Hanks. I and he was, he was great in it. And he didn't want to do it. And uh, Jerry Marshall, the director, went to his house and gave him the script and said, Jackie, just remember, if you die tomorrow, your last movie was Smokey and the Bandit 3. And oh! which, <laughs> so that got him in the movie. And he was, he was That's great. That's a good pitch. It. Yeah, yeah. It's, I don't even remember Smokey and the Bandit 3. Yeah, it I wasn't very good. Yeah. It, was, it was more of a, uh, uh, like the Enos, uh, Big and Little Enos, uh, you know, Pat McCormick <laughs> and Paul Williams. Paul Williams, he was actually a songwriter as well, right? Remember you he told me He was a that? great songwriter. Yeah, like a and, lot and of- And when we're done, when we, after we do Matt's segment, remind me, I'll tell you my great uh, Paul Williams and Matt story. So- Something to stay tuned for, kids. A Paul Williams. Story. Stay tuned. I didn't play. I didn't play our intro, but I, I came on with uh, Sweet Transvestite uh, Tim Curry from um, Rocky, Rocky Horror. Horror. You know, it's I see him at some of these new fan, uh, you know, the uh, Comic Cons, and you know what? People say, "Oh, I feel bad for him. He's in a wheelchair," but you know, he is. He's somewhat fallen ill. He, yes. I mean, people get old. It happens, you know. I and think it, he had a. I want to say he had a stroke. Yes, bro, he did. He did. But I saw a thing on Facebook for some show he was doing, and he was very. He's very on it. Guilted. He can't. Yeah. yeah. But yeah. I think I'm not sure. I think you can meet him, but I think he already has stuff signed. I don't. I think it's it's an effort for him to sign. Yeah. So you just can't go stand in front of him and throw him something to sign. But I think he has pre-signed stuff that he signs before the show. But he's he's so talented. He oh was, my god! You know, you know, I just watched Hunt for Red October, and then he's oh in. Oh god, he is an um, Home Alone you know, legend. Home Alone two legend. Um, oh my god, yes. legend. Yes, he's. Uh, and he was a singer, right? He was a singer. Oh yeah, he, he, yeah. He, did, uh, he has a great album called Paradise Garage. You I was listen listening. To it. It's really, it's really, really good. And he was just in, oh, he's an Annie. He's a rooster. He's a Carol Burnett's brother and Annie, uh, the original. Really? Yeah. No, no, yeah. no, that's, that's one of my favorite. That's the best Annie of them all because Carol Burnett's in it. She's the best. Uh, Bernadette Peters and then Tim Curry plays a brother. Tim Curry, and yeah. you know, uh, that movie alone, I watched it with all my nieces. I uh, just has a special place in my heart, especially the song tomorrow with Chloe. I'd sing it yep. with all the girls, you know, and that one is my favorite. Um, I think the girl that played it on Broadway, I forget. You'll probably remember her name, but Andre, Andrea McArdle. Yes. And then I, she, uh, Sarah Jessica Parker played it, but I can't find any YouTube videos of her. I I saw her sing on Saturday Night Live once, and I wasn't impressed. So maybe her voice changed. Yeah. And, and Andy McCardle is is Andy to me, and then Aiden Quinn in the film. And Aiden, um, Aiden Quinn, uh, yeah, that's my favorite. It was funny when I, I did a book signing in Baltimore, and she was one of the guests, and I was sitting here, and she was like in the same row, but her back was to me, and. I was I, I I don't know why I kept I kept humming NYC you know NYC and and um, finally she she leaned back she goes are you humming NYC I said yeah I'm sorry it's just it's your Annie for God's sake no, let's let's go let's, let's let's go do a little you know do a little walk through New York and sing together I love another, that another very, another very nice another very nice person. So. Annie, you know, uh, it's so funny because I had some drag queen friends back in the day. and I, I I'm had sorry. That. I'm sorry. Aileen Quinn. Aileen, Aileen Quinn, yes. yes. Aiden, Aiden Quinn is the uh, uh, oldest brother in Legends of the Fall. And also who I wanted to play Harry Chapin if they ever made my Harry Chapin movie. So my apologies Did, uh, to Aiden Desperate, Quinn. Okay, Desperately Seeking Susan. He was in that. And yes. Then he, yes, okay. That's what I'm... But I yeah. was just thinking, uh, uh, Annie, it's funny because when Shannon, if you're watching this... I left a, a drag queen friend of mine years ago, left a wig in the back seat. And I have the tape, I guess, I, I don't even know, it was a CD or whatever. And we were singing it. And she all of a sudden I turned around and she goes, Auntie, did you enjoy what? She goes, it's the lovely boiling sister. Big ass wig on. I wish I'd had an iPhone camera back then. Oh my God, that song. And um, uh, Danielle Brisbois, 
who played Stephanie on All in the Family, little niece. Oh, yes. Day. She was, they cast her. She was the original Molly on Broadway and Annie. That's right. Yep. I want this floor clean. I should run downstairs and get my Annie script. We could we could do Annie together. Yes. And then, of course, we love our beautiful and talented, whom we miss so much, is Anne Reiking. I had to find her. Passed away, and I just, I love her. Um unbelievable um anyways so see how we get off track uh i know uh, topic like i could talk about tim curry forever uh it's funny how this new TikTok, all these new generation like are getting into him and it's confusing because when i saw him i'm like am i I think he's attractive. I don't know if I'm supposed to feel that way. <laughs> I posted that on Facebook and then people were like, put ditto, ditto. Yeah. Like Prince, like Prince is not really an attractive man. He wears freaking high heels, but I always thought he was sexy. Like, I'm sure there's a woman that you think is like not considered like, you know, your, your basic, yeah, I mean, I mean your, your, your genuine beauty or whatever that you think is incredibly attractive. That uh, people well, don't. After Halloween, of course, now everyone thinks she's gorgeous. I, I thought Jamie Lee Curtis was beautiful. Jamie Lee Curtis, the body. Mm -hmm. And I always had a thing for uh, Sandra Bernard, um, Madonna's friend. Sandra. <laughs> yes, I don't know what it is. I don't know if it's it's the teeth. I don't know what it is, but just something about her. She was funny as hell. Yeah. Oh, Sandra Bernard. That's, you know, that's a good one. That's a good one. Uh, I, you know, they have that, like, people think that you're thinking sexy and then they put like the pictures up and people are like, and it's like, it can be a character or whatever. Yeah. And somebody put up, uh, I think it was Steve Buscemi <laughs> from Fargo. And oh. he's not your conventional, like, handsome guy. The little guy. He's the little yeah, guy. Yeah. <laughs> like Joe Pesci and like, I think he's, kind of hot and um good fellas like i don't know what it is you know I, I i don't know i have different tastes but uh like some people were putting like the beast from beauty and the beast and oh ron um, perlman just, oh, he, didn't, he didn't need any makeup yeah He's... yeah like you know fictional characters i'm like oh i'm getting away <laughs> it's kind of weird <laughs> but i like it yeah you ass you ass yeah look for her on facebook super sweet lady I'm glad I'm glad they're married. Billy Billy was loved her. You could tell when he post stuff about them. So glad they got married. Uh with uh the uh that whole movie, uh Richard Pryor's like oh, oh. <laughs> 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 like the whole movie. And another one, like almost similar to that, like crack me the hell up, was John Ritter with the kid uh the red hair. Oh, uh, um, um, ch not child's play. Um, no, you know what I'm talking about. It's yes. so freaking funny. Uh, and Jackie Gleason's in that too because he, no, he, no, he's not in that. No, he's not in that. Uh, uh, Lorraine uh, from SNL. Uh, Problem, in, Problem Child. Problem Child, yes. Lorraine, Lorraine, Lorraine Junior. Newman. Oh, <laughs> don't mind Junior as he's kid, like blowing up the cat. Like that was a freaking funny movie. I miss him. I miss yes. John Junior. Good Lord. Let's go down to the Regal Beagle and have some cocktails. That's right. That's right. Jack! <laughs> Mr. Furley. Mr. Furley. <laughs> Always had the ascots on, yeah. <laughs> I think you know why there was no Mrs. Furley. Yeah, I think. Yeah, I think oh, was, that's why he was always like, yeah. you know, <laughs> yeah. oh, that was so homophobic now, if you look at it yeah. now. Oh, yeah. He had to be gay in order to be a roommate, and then he would make fun of him every time. Well, is that how you guys do it, huh, you guys? You got... <laughs> and then Larry, of course, the, the womanizer. But Jack always got hot girls, and there was always he's always getting them like screwed up. Like this one was supposed to meet him here, and then the father came. You know, he's always getting like it was almost like good times. Like every time they try to get out of the ghetto, they get knocked back down. Again. <laughs> damn, 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 damn. Yes, and Keith, and they brought in Keith. Keith killed the show. I forget. I forget the actor he who played Keith. It. He actually Keith played Keith, but he's like, the, he's like the he's the the black Ted McGinley. He he, <laughs> yeah. he he killed that show. Like Ted McGinley killed 
Love Boat and uh, My Mary with Children and uh, Happy Days. That Keith killed good times. You're so uh, yes. He's like the poison that yes. you don't want to put in the. I mean, he's yeah. a good looking guy, believe me. And he's had some funny lines, especially with Marcy, you know. Yeah. But it's like you just you hit it on the hammer. Man, that was that like, was clean. It's buddy. like, well, we, we got to find a way to cancel this show, but we don't want to pay Ed O'Neill all that money. Mm, how can we keep people from watching it? Hey, hire Ted McGinley. You'll be off in a year. Yeah. Poor Ted McGinley. Yes. It's almost like the guy from Grease 2. He's the same way. Falcon Crest, um, uh, Grease 2, uh, Blonde oh. here. Uh, oh, um, uh, Max Caulfield? Yes. Almost like if everything he was in was almost like a ball. <laughs> My, uh, Chloe loved that song, Cool Rider. Oh. She loved that. Cool uh, that. Yeah, you look at that right now. I was like, it sucked, but now I look at it and I'm like, it was pretty I good. I love Grease. I love Grease too. All the your girl for all seasons. That's a good soundtrack. I wanted to. I always want to interview uh, Christopher McDonald, who is Goose. And my first question oh. would be, my first question would be, where does the pollen go? Yes. <laughs> And I keep trying to get Adrian Zemed to do something for the website, but he never, he always says, yeah, check with me in a couple months. But, so. Wow, we got off that. We got, uh, oh, we went on to uh, Gleason to. Yeah. Gleason we to could Greece go on too. and on forever. Yeah. <laughs> but, um, okay, so 1977, let's get with it here. Uh, back in the day with Mike and Jay, uh, one of these days we'll come on and we're going to go live. So if you, uh, we're willing to take on somebody that's really knowledgeable and wants to talk about their favorite movie and come on and we'll show a clip and, um, you can do a little reenactment, yeah. like a, a little reenactment. So, uh, so this week in pop culture, 1977, great year. Uh, like Michael said, uh, love boat, love boat is, uh, oh, love boat. TV show, Captain Steuben. Captain Steuben uh, passed away. Gopher and uh, Isaac. I do that in the camera. Do a point. Do the point. Oh yeah. And Doc and. What was uh, Ted McGinley's? I don't even remember Ted McGinley's character. He was like, I think he took over when they they got when they fired Lauren Twos because she was doing too much cocaine on the set. Um. I, I was wondering yeah. why she always like this. Yeah, yeah. Julia Cruiser. <laughs> she, she fell overboard, I guess. We got this guy. Um, yeah, Stan Gable from uh, uh, Revenge of the Nerds, also. Oh, good one, Mike. Good. I don't have Thank my mic. I don't have my little. Eh, 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 eh. Yeah, that's okay. Uh, but, um, you want to sabotage anything? I heard you. That was fire, Mike. That was. Genuinely, that's you. yours, right? That is yours, original. Yes. Originality on that one was a 10. We ten. love you, Ted McGinley. <laughs> uh, but uh, I don't know what the heck this is here. Okay. Uh, let's talk about uh, The Love Boat. The Love Boat uh, actually first aired uh, as a pilot. I was doing a little research on it. So, um, Mike, uh, you want to talk about it? Uh I don't know if anybody can see that below us, but um, it says it aired from uh, on ABC from like 1977, and then it uh, and then the series uh, was set on the uh, passenger cruise called the MS Pacific Princess. Yes, very. Uh, it was almost like to me, it felt like uh, like Love American style on on a boat. <laughs> Love American, but, in, style. but instead of. But instead of different, you know, uh, vignettes, you know, three different shows, three different plots, it was all one plot that just kind of um, revolved around everybody. And he involved, you know, Doc. Doc was the ladies' man, and Isaac was the bartender. And how come uh, Doc was a lady? I think Gopher was like hotter, but he was just Gopher. Fred, Fred Gandy, but I don't know. He became a congressman later in life. Oh, um, that's great! I forgot about that. Yeah. But Bernie, Bernie Capel was a great actor. He was Doc. He was, used to be Siegfried on Get Smart. Um, uh, Mary Tyler Moore? No, wait. No, he wasn't on that. That was, um, no. I'm thinking of. Um, oh, uh, uh, Ted Knight. Cloud. 
<laughs> Gavin Cloud, Ted Knight. Yeah, yeah Ted Knight. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, yeah, so we had a couple of, uh, I was singing that theme. Once you get it in your head, too, mm -hmm. Alexa. Alexa, could you play the theme to Love Boat? You know, and you know the words. I want to see, you know, uh, you sing it with us because it just comes to you, right? Uh, but um, let me get this out of here. I got so much pictures below here. Alexa. Alexa. I'll get it. Alexa. Play the theme from the Love Boat. Okay, here we go. Here's the theme. From the love boat. Turn it up. Around. Turn it up loud. Alexa, volume seven. Because I'm going to put all the. Here's the From the Love oh. Boat by Keith Ferreira featuring Evan Jolly, London Music Works on Amazon Music. Ready? Isaac. <laughs> and cut. I mean, and. So come up to the. Anytime, Alexa. I'm just a sweet transvestite. Alexa, from play the theme from the love boat. Transol, thank you. Ferreira, featuring Evan Jolly, London Music Works. Like my song music. There we go. Yeah, I love it. Oh, Charles Manson was a ho was a guest. That's awesome. <laughs> I, I I remember that episode. That's why that's why Julie disappeared. He killed her. I Who want else was on show? Alexa, Exciting volume eight. Nick, are you ready? It floats right to you. So we'll be making another run. The love of the Any other good guest stars? Yeah! <laughs> Colonel Sanders. Colonel uh, Sanders made sure that the, the, the buffet was full. It's an open smile. Ah, Dr. Frankenfurter, I remember that episode. When, uh, it's love. When uh, Bernie Capel, Bernie Capel wanted more money, they uh, replaced him with Doctor Frankenfurter. He was the doc for a couple episodes. <laughs> I remember that. He's just a sweet transvestite. John Holmes. <laughs> John Holmes. He he also he also killed Julie, but in a different way. <laughs> do la, do la, do la, do la, do la. <laughs> you stop karate chopping the fences, <laughs> John Holmes. That John I have Holmes. to say, that movie with Val Kimner, man, he could act. Uh, yeah. Val Kimner was on my flight, and I got to lean in and look at him closely. And this is when he had gained a little weight, but he wasn't too old. But he was still. I looked at him, and he was just absolutely. I was just like, and he would just—he didn't even pull away. He was like looking at me. I'm like, huh? He's like. Uh, he's like a surfer. He was like this. Uh, what do you have? <laughs> and I'm like, <laughs> what do you need? He's like, a, uh, coffee. And I'm like, yeah. He's like, and then uh, his son was like, I'll have a coke. He goes, uh, excuse me, be polite. He goes, uh, can I please get a coke? He goes, here you go. I'm like, oh, here you go. Here you go, Mr. Kilner. He goes, oh, please. So please, Val. I'm like, oh, God, Val. <laughs> God, you Val. Said, you should have said, I'll be your Huckleberry. Who else? Who who else was on the love boat? Oh my god, there were so many stars. There were like a jo uh Joni from uh uh Aaron Spelling was off obviously the director, uh I mean the producer and director. Producer, yeah. Uh so Tori Spelling, I think, was on a couple of them. Uh good lord, we could look back, Tom Bosley, uh the blonde sisters that were like big boobs. Uh, oh, the Landers. 
Audrey and Judy. Yes. Audrey and Julie. Uh, Julie uh, Audrey and Judy Landers. Yeah. Yes, they used to be on there all the time. They'd come on. Uh, oh God. Um. Uh. What's her name? Charo. Charo. Yeah, she's 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 one, I think she has the most. Uh, I think yeah. she has the most. Uh, I'm gonna have to look that up, but I'm pretty sure. Uh, the most appearances on that show. Yeah. Oh my okay. God. Yeah. Any more fun uh, photos? Oh yeah, um, I was I was going to say Cha Cha Di Gaborio. I'm like wrong. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the what best dancer at Saint Bernadette's. Cha Cha Di Gaborio and Danny Zuko with the worst reputation. And then yeah. and then Sandy goes. <laughs> <laughs> Poor Sandy, she got treated like shit that whole movie. And then her sexy scene. You're talking about a stunt. Uh, I'm like for real. That's yeah. it. I love that movie. No, before no, that I saw that, classic. It's a classic. Before I saw that movie, they released you know, the one that I want is a single. And I always saw it. John Travolta was singing, I got shoes. They're multiplying. And I was like, why would you have shoes that multiply? Who's oh, we this? can go on another off topic about that one. That's yes. Mr. Larry Vaughn, ladies and gentlemen. Mayor Vaughn. That's why. Mayor That's where you went. On. Let me uh, pull him down here. Let me get Mr. F uh, Dr. Frankfurter off there. Uh, look at this. Larry Vaughn. He's a good guest. Good guest. In between uh, Jaws and Jaws 2, uh, he was in exile from the island and he sailed around the world on the love boat. So uh, that's kind of cool that uh, they featured him. We had, uh, like you said, we have all the names there. Um, Jill Will and then it says Ted McGinley. And then I, who is Pat Klaus? Pat, Pat. I, don't, I don't remember who that was. My mind's I don't know. I don't know. Uh, might be a secondary character they added at the end. Like Gunther? You know, he just passed away, didn't I he? I saw that. Gunther on Friends just passed away. Yeah. I got to look that up. So, come up to the lab. <laughs> uh, Re-elect uh, Mayor Larry Vaughn, 2022. <laughs> Vote oh, for him. Good. Vote for uh, him. So yeah, the, the Love Boat was an amazing series. It was a, it was awesome. It was an awesome Sunday lineup. Uh, it it actually uh, was on after Fantasy Island. Or wait, Fantasy Island was after, uh, was before or afterwards? I think. Wait a minute. Um, I think the Love Boat was aired later because it had romance and they, they tried to throw a little yeah, a little okay, salacious stuff in every now and then. Yeah, uh, uh, Saturday Night lineup at the time, which included the Fantasy Island, and then okay, I quoted Wiki there. Okay, uh, Fantasy Island, that was great. Yeah, I love both. That was some great stuff. Fantasy the Island, the plane, the plane, Herbie Villachez, and then I forgot all about Dion Warwick singing the 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 love boat scene later on. I totally forgot about that. Yeah, I think I think Jack Jones did it originally. Was that guy's name Pat Krause? Pat Klaus. Uh, Klaus. Oh, that's K L O U S. Okay, I wasn't even close to spelling it right. The Love Boat. Uh, well, I had I was going to pull up a video, and I actually made a video, and I actually gave uh, credits and props to the um, the owner of this video. <laughs> Who is that? Sounds like a horn. Well, ironically, this uh, uh, this month or this year in uh, nineteen this week in nineteen forty six, Pat Klaus was born. So, very, oh really? Uh, so very uh, timely reference. Uh, that is. Let's see, let's see who she played in the Love Pat Boat. Uh, look at that Smokey and the Bandit. Oh, that's, I'm gonna, I, I'm I'm having I'm, I'm getting I'm getting like. Ner like nervous, like I have like OCD about like there's like a like, wrinkle in it. I want to. What if I like Venmo you some money and you can go down to Walmart and buy like a black frame for twenty dollars? We put it in. We put it in, in that a frame. Way? Just put yeah. it in a frame and put it back in a box. No. I oh, she won't let you have that. <laughs> She's like, I'm over the movies, Michael. I can, I can do that. <laughs> Let's see who the hell Pat Klaus was. Now I'm curious. Looks like an old. Did Captain, did Captain Steuben, did he get, 
Didn't he get married? Did Captain Steuben get married on the boat? I don't know. I don't remember. For a uh, mother for his uh, uh, mother for Vicky. Vicky was just annoying. I don't know why the hell they threw yeah. her. She just bugged me. I don't know what it was. I always liked I always liked Isaac because he was always giving the best advice. He was like the Tony. He's like Tony Robbins of like of the freaking love boat. Without and then the giant the, of the giant hands and huge yeah. head. Yes. And he was always giving the best advice. Always like making things right. He like you could do no wrong. He was like the saint. He was the best. Yeah. So that was Victor, my favorite character. Victor, when you watch this, fact check me. I'm just going to say that. I believe Pat Klaus was the uh, woman that Captain Steuben married. Uh, yeah, let me go see. Um, I could just Google it right now. Okay. No, we no, we got more. We we've been we've been on for a while already. We haven't yeah. even talked about this song or anything. All right, so this clip, I have the um, I have the credit on it right away. Um, his YouTube channel is called uh, J People Mover, and. Um, this clip is uh, the actual the first um, the you know the not the trailer the um, hello opening opening, opening it's not opening it's the um, uh, good lord trailer? not the trailer it's a series that the pilot the pilot hello I oh pilot. okay uh, gee, uh, I was gonna make a crude joke and I I'm glad I didn't say it uh, <laughs> Uh, so, okay. So it's a little, uh, it's a little, jaunt it's a little, uh, uh, ja jaunty, jaunty. Is that the word? Uh, so I, I, I was trying to edit out the bottom, but it got big. So let's just play it. Look, Ted Hamilton. Dick Finn. What? Totally different cast. Yeah, I'm noticing that. She didn't make the cut. <laughs> and a she lot didn't of, make the a, cut. Yeah, a lot, a lot more characters than they needed. They just needed like the four or five main ones. So now yeah. I could, I was going to play the original, but I'm like, you know what? I'll show the pilot and see how like different it was. Like totally different people, uh, and they changed it all up. So, what do you think about that, Mike? I was, uh, what was it? What was it? I was like, no, I don't want to play that. You're like, no, play the original song and i'm like no i want the real one what what, what episode were we talking about you're like no play the original the original uh series song oh was it six million dollar man maybe yes and i'm like no i don't want it i don't want to and then you're like nope <laughs> nope that's how i was with just that right there I'm like you know what though i do like that one i i never even knew until you told me that that wasn't the original i just huh? thought that so michael's facts oh, again yeah. well take um uh next week when we talk about the partners family uh, there was two different theme songs. The first season had a, a theme song, and then the rest of the season it was, you know, come on, get happy. So uh, I didn't see that. I didn't see what we were doing yet. So okay, that's oh, cool. No, that's we, cool. we can talk about Shirley Jones, David, Ca I mean Cassidy, uh, how they actually made uh, the charts. I mean, uh, I mean, I was just listening to uh, the Brady Bunch the other day. I was listening to <laughs> driving down the highway in my model. <laughs> Battle TA. Woo. <laughs> Woo. I was, keep on, keep on, keep on moving. 
The, the least favorite of mine is when it's time to change. Thank that you. was my least. But Johnny Bravo with the ponies never run. <laughs> Bean stalks never grew, clowns never <laughs> laughed before. Till, till I found found you. you. Yes. <laughs> the name's Bravo, Johnny Bravo. <laughs> Johnny Bravo. This week in pop culture is 1977, and the movie out that year was none other than you can say it, Michael. It was Smokey and the Bandit. No, he did this actually. Oh, I thought he was doing. Oh my God! I thought he was doing Smoking the Bandit. Oh, I don't know. Oh, I'm sorry. I should run. I should run downstairs and get my deep poster. Sorry. I didn't uh, even know that he was going to do that because I asked him and he goes, "No, I sent the deep." And I'm like, I went back and I'm like, okay. I, I think he did say he was going to do the deep, but I thought. We oh, I was Smoking the Bandit. Smoky and the Bandit. Mm. Oh, well, Smoking the Bandit, good movie, but the deep also a good movie. Yes, so. and none other than my favorite actor, the beloved Robert Shaw, also known as Quint, Captain Quint from Jaws, also known as probably the goat of acting, besides um, our truly uh, Roy, uh, that would say the greatest of all time. Whenever you hear the word goat, uh, it's the acronym for greatest of all time. And I think that my two are Roy and Shaw, and I have to say Dreyfus too. I'm God, I don't even want to go there. I'm, so many of them. Uh, and they're all from the same movie, The Three R's. Three How ironic. Hours. How ironic. Yes. But he did The Deep, and um, so that was uh, his last movie, actually, uh, Mike, right? That was um, his Robert last Shaw's? Movie. Yes. No, he did a, a movie called uh, uh, a couple after that. I think he oh, forced uh, 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 The Avalanche. Avalanche Express was his last movie. Yes, yes, yeah, that's right. Um, my bad, you're and right. I think, and I think Force 10 from Navarone with Harrison Ford came out also after The Deep. But it was one of his last one of his last films and probably his most successful film after Jaws. So, Yeah. And everybody I, mean, af I mean after chronologically, not money-wise, because The Sting is obviously probably the second yeah. highest grossing film. Back when Nick Nolte wasn't... Like really too popular, but uh, that uh, well, he, Nick Nolte. This is Nick Nolte's first. Well, not his first movie, but his first feature big movie. He and uh, Don Matt Johnson and Robin Matson from uh, uh, General Hospital. They were in a movie called Return to Macon County, which got re-released after Nick Nolte became big and Don Johnson became big. Wow! Um, wow! Nick Nolte. I, I first knew Nick Nolte from a box of uh, Clairol hair dye, uh, blonde that uh, I saw in a store once. Really? I didn't know. I didn't know it was him then, but then later on, I saw it at a flea market, and I said, "I'm sure I've seen that before." He was a so, model. Yeah, he, he was a model. So the deep was his. Uh, he 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 was big. He made it huge the year before, playing uh, Tom Jordash in uh, Rich Man Poor Man. So that's why he was. Rich man, uh, poor man. That was all. Uh, that was all talk about. Everybody yeah. talked about rich man, poor man. First miniseries. And Nick Nolte has been in so many movies. Um, I like the remake of the Robert, uh, the uh, Robert De Niro. Uh, uh, oh, Cape Fear, Cape Fear. Yeah, come out, come out, wherever you are, Governor. Counselor, counselor, yeah. come on out. Yeah. And down and out in Beverly Hills. I mean, he actually uh, played that role, and then years later, kind of like morphed into that role. He had a bad well, Alcohol, alcoholism isn't a joke, though. You know, it's so sad yeah. because it's affected. And look at even Robert Shaw. He smoked three packs of cigarettes a day. He drank scotch, and you know that's his choice. Um, unfortunately, he died really young of a heart attack, and um, and he wasn't even didn't even get an Oscar for that for his role in the Man of All Seasons, which he should have. You should just go back and give it to him. Just honor, honor to be nominated. He would. I say. know, I know. But uh, what was that? Everybody year that year that. Dun, 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 dun. What was that? Uh, Chariots, uh, Chariots of Fire. Yeah, I was like, what movie is this? I, I before I wasn't really educated on that. I'm like, what? I thought I don't know what else was nominated that year. I'm like, I didn't even, I didn't even heard of this movie. What is this? Chariots of Fire. Uh, and then uh, I. Mean, Chariots of Fire Raiders. Um, Raiders. That's what I was like. Raiders. What? What is this? Fair shot. Um, it's Reds. Oh, Reds uh, with uh, Robert. Yeah, with uh, um, uh, uh, Warren Beatty. And, oh, I thought uh, it was uh, okay. Warren Beatty. Yeah. Good yeah. 
I think maybe being there with uh, Peter Sellers and maybe the China Syndrome. I want to say those were the five movies. That but, was a good uh, movie, actually. Jane Fonda and uh, Michael Michael um, Michael Douglas. Yeah, that was a good movie. Jack, Jack Lemon. And if you watch it again, and it's such a good movie, you don't even notice. But there is no soundtrack. There is no music in that movie. Nothing. Not even a score, huh? Not even a score. Not a theme. Not a, you know, not a dun 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 dun. Yeah, Nothing. So. so it had to be. It was that good that it carried it off. It didn't even need any music. Yeah. I mean, I can't even see. I just see Jaws without even having the music. I mean, any movie like Halloween. I mean, movie is so effective. Music is so effective. Yes. E.T. I mean, uh, like watch a Steven Spielberg movie when you don't hear the music. You're like, hmm. yeah. <laughs> I saw I saw an early screening of Out of Africa that didn't have any music, and the scene where he takes her flying, it felt like eight hours. It was just so. It felt like a Baptist church yeah. Sunday service. Yes, I was like, "Oh my god!" But then oh my we got god. What is this going to end? You ever go to one got, of those? Oh, oh yeah. I'm what do you like, get, John Barry? <laughs> you get John Barry's music? It's you know, it's like okay, that makes sense. But yeah, it was just like, <laughs> oh my god! I was like, oh, please crash. Yes. <laughs> Every time, every time I'm going to say when someone ruins something, I'm like, "Oh man, you Ted McGinley it, you Ted McGinley it." <laughs> Her like a uh, uh, kingpin, Munson, you Munson it. <laughs> you got, you got McGinley. We should, we should start that. You should start that. Oh, you got McGinley. Oh, oh, oh. Mike, you're on fire tonight. <laughs> <laughs> oh my uh, God, Ted McGinley. So what did, if you want to ruin your series for technically <laughs> that's right man so what, did, so what did keith say about the deep oh, yeah. yes the deep uh jacqueline Brissett was in this movie who is gorgeous <sighs> they sure uh, was they sure was in that movie yes and uh, uh let's just pull up the uh oh i'm sorry i've got the the deep i got it uh, yeah, Keith uh, Keith Stevenson every week does a movie. Also, Matthew Drinnenberg does our top 100 billboard, and he tries to stick with songs that he can sing acoustically. And he's singing one of my favorite songs, actually, this week. Uh, and then we have none other than the – oh, sorry, no, my bad. Keith Stevenson, and he's here to review and talk about the movie The Deep. And uh, here he is. Without further ado, let us, let us, let us roll. I put the glasses down. Let me He's very, very cool. He's very cool. We're coming at you today with The Deep from 1977, uh, starring Nick Nolte, uh, Lou Gossett, and Jacqueline Bissett. And as you know, you know the story about uh, treasure hunters who comes across uh, not only treasure, but... Uh, other things that are down there, drugs, morphine, and then drug dealers are getting involved. Uh, so uh, already Peter Benchley is well known, well known uh, in the uh, the uh, novel world, the book world. And so uh, by the time uh, The Deep comes out, uh, he is famous for Jaws. And so we are so intrigued to go and see this movie. And I did. I saw it on the big screen. Thoroughly entertained, thoroughly entertained. Uh, music done by John Barry. Beautiful music. I miss John Barry so much. Uh, directed by Peter Yates. Uh, so it's a classic coming out of 77. And so, and lastly, I want to show off my shirt. Uh, it's an orca. It's got the orca and it got the barrels. And this was sent to me by um, uh, Mark, Michael Folker. So if you want one, look them up. He advertises in Let's Talk Jaws and uh, my big Jaws group. Uh, and so there you have it. The Deep from 1977. And I push it back to you, Mike and Jay, back in the day. And as always, be cool and keep cool. watching. And keep watching the movies. Woo always. Always. Nice shirt. Hey, Michael Falker, you want to be on this show? You need to send a couple of shirts to the Smith family. <laughs> Mike, yes. every time you hear that, you're always like, you made a plug in it. <laughs> me, me, I want one. <laughs> That's right. Nice review. Yes. Um, 
and I, I think I mentioned we were doing a chat before. Um, my I graduated high school in '78, but in order to be a drama, the drama teacher's assistant, I had to I had to take my final math requirement. So I took it during summer school. Yeah. Uh, that summer of '77, and Matt worked at the theater that was showing the deep. And that's where I had to go to summer school at. So we, not at the theater, but the school nearby. So he and I probably saw that movie 40 times that summer. Because we just, I, you know, he'd meet me after school. We'd go watch, you know. Because, you know, school ended like at noon. So, yeah. Now you, see, now you remember that. You see how, like, child remembers that? I remember that we were dating, me and my best friend Amy were dating two guys that were ushers. And they snuck us in the back. And we would go and watch Meatballs with Bill Murray. We must have seen that movie like 15 times. Are you ready for the summer? Are you ready for the summer? <laughs> it was a good time. Right? Good time. Yes, I love that. I have that album. Yes. And the kid that's in it, he's also in My Bodyguard, correct? Chris Makepeace. Yes. A Canadian, a Canadian for Victor's. Uh, I'm not a Canadian. Uh, I love Canadians yeah. the best. But I don't, I, I, he did that, he did my bodyguard, he kind of disappeared. He was Rudy, Rudy the Rabbit, yeah, Rudy the Rabbit, yeah, Rudy the yes, Rabbit. Yes, yes, that was a good one. I have a, I just have, I just pulled that up for some reason. I just, I wanted oh. to, I wanted to just like, obviously you guys know that that's Steven Spielberg right there. Uh, I think he looks good without his beard when he was younger. He looks almost like an Andy Samberg. He's like a really haughty when he was younger. And then as you see him in the 80s, every time I see him, and I no disrespect to him, I love him. I think he's great. But he always looks like this creepy Uncle Stevie when he has all these pictures, these weird one in the grass and all that. But all these other ones, he's so like cute and hot. Like, I don't know, I, I don't know why sure. I brought that up. I'm sure when he sees this creepy Uncle Steve, he won't be showing up on Let's Talk Jaws Live anytime. He'll laugh. <laughs> well, what did you just say about, about the movie? Oh, yeah. Hook. Hook. Look at that. Uh, I didn't like BF. That one. G, BFG. Mm, yeah. No. No? Uh, although there's many that I don't. That's probably the, my least favorite. But I, I I don't mind hook it grows on me. Actually, you know what's annoying is like ca -ca, ca -ca. Uh, <laughs> the, the, the the guy uh, Rufus or whatever that Rufus Rufio yeah. Rufio Rufio yeah he's like or this Mark Ruff, brain, or Mark like, Ruffalo <laughs> <laughs> skateboarding like <laughs> yeah uh, and your favorite Julia Roberts come on I wouldn't have clapped right that Tingle better be dead if it was up to me I'm not clapping sorry die. I, mean, I made a little clip one time and I wasn't trying to like act like be acting or anything, but I did that scene where she's like, I'm just a girl standing in front of a boy <laughs> wanting him to love her. <laughs> and my friends are like, oh yeah. So I'm like, I really wasn't being like, I wasn't serious. Like, you know, I wouldn't, I wouldn't have chose that monologue. <laughs> I actually like that movie. That, I, actually crazy, like, I actually like a lot of Julia Roberts film in spite of Julia Roberts. So yeah, I love Notting Hill. <laughs> I love Notting Hill. You know that I always use the quote when I'm on, I don't want to tell, when I used to be in that, when I used to work for Mohawk Airlines and I would pour the cup in and the ice would fall and slip and I'd be, and they would just go up in the air and I'd be like, oh, geez, <laughs> slippery little suckers. And then there, there would always be one person that got that reference and I'd always be like, you get a free drink. That's right. right? And I always get, like, I always say that, slippery little suckers. Really? They're like, pretty women, Julie Roberts. Yeah. So um, that's Keith, and he has the Big Jaws page. Uh, he also has like over 28 different Facebook pages. You name it, Stanley Kubrick, uh, uh, Tarantino, uh, Eddie uh, Murphy. Eddie Murphy, uh, Spike on. Lee, uh, Tony and Ridley Scott. Keith, you should All do a deep, a deep page. You should do a deep yes. page. I'll join it. Yeah. yeah. What, what what happened to your other page that Victor did we, and then we joined? We made that page. Like sometimes oh, the, I make the, the, the 1941 it page. It's still going. I Is just, it getting more people? I think yeah, it does every now and then. I get a, 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 a fan request, but. I think Keith posts on it more than I do. Thank you. Oh, really? <laughs> Keith yeah, yeah. is like, he should be voted like best president. He's like He's uh, most likely to succeed if like superlatives were given out in the Jaws community. Uh, well, Jimmy Lovato would be like the most, what do you call it? Uh, Jaws spirit. Uh, no spirit. But oh, there's a bunch of people though. Like, I don't know. Like, that could be, that could be a bunch of people. Uh, but 
Uh, we don't even want to go with uh, Queen, obviously, would be Donna. Yeah. Uh, King would be you. Uh, and then um, I will do, I will deflect. I will, I will re re relinquish my crown. I'll just be I, the gesture. Uh, I'll, be the, I'll be the gesture. I'll be the class clown. How's that? What if you What if you found out that? What best looking? Oh, thank you, Jay. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I'll, 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 I'll do that. <laughs> I would get uh, I wouldn't get anything. I would get. Nothing. I, I I wouldn't get. I wasn't pop. I wasn't popular in high school. I was like I was like medium popular. You know, I I wasn't I wasn't picked on like I was in the fifth grade. But I mean, I wasn't popular. I didn't get a. Did you get a superlative in school? No. No. Yeah. No. No. But I was no. on. The, I I tried to like join the they they did mash that year for the school play and I didn't I didn't make it and I was bummed. Um, but um, I love the hot lips. No, I, I I don't know I. I and then the Hello Dolly, and I didn't get that. Yeah, I, that it was only through college that I I really started doing plays, and then I I would get parts. But I, I didn't really have too much confidence. I don't know. Um, maybe because it was all the bullying in the fifth grade that I went through. <laughs> in other words, as Steve Buscemi in the movie Billy Madison, when my friend Derek uh, <laughs> sent me a message through Facebook and says. Hi, uh, Janine. I just want to say I'm so sorry for bullying you really bad all these years ago. I said, No worries, no problem, Derek. Yeah, okay. And I turned around, <laughs> Dude, people cross, I have to kill, and I cross crossed his, his name off. That's right. So That's it's sort right. of like that. Fifth grade has got <laughs> post traumatic stress disorder. Everybody's like, Oh, get over it. Now, if they did to me what they did back then, they'd all be suspended. I, I'm, oh, yeah. I'm getting mad and angry because I used to cry so bad. And I moved uh -huh. there at fifth grade. Yeah. And his name was Derek Sanderson. And I'm he's Derek Sanderson. And um, I, still, I still haven't gotten an apology from him. And uh, you should find him. I tried find to him on, find him on Facebook. Kick I, hope he would, yeah. Yeah, I just hope he would just, you know, send me a line saying, hey, I'm sorry. But nope. Nope. But I hope his kids aren't bullied. Hope his kids aren't bullied. I think we need to find out where his kids go to school and pay some fifth grader to beat the hell out of him every day. You know what? I couldn't even be that much of an asshole because oh, he he was a dick. I'm sorry, but <laughs> and uh, Ricky something. Ricky, I forget his name. The other one, Ricky. Derek Jean, but he apologized. Uh, and then there was uh, Shelly Tamas. Thank you, Shelly Tamas. Uh, uh, shout out to you, Deanna Demers. Thank you for all the torturing and terrorizing. I just wanted to say that. <laughs> Uh, anyways, I hope your kids wow. are not being bullied. I don't. I don't know why I just said that. I sell seek retribution. No, <laughs> I'm actually I'm over it. <laughs> I, I just bully. I had a bully in ninth grade named Mike Crum, and he's see you uh, remember his, his girlfriend. Well, I just I had just moved in moved to town, Avon Lake, Ohio, and I was uh, practicing football. Went out for the football team. And yeah. his girlfriend, his girlfriend approached me and started talking oh, to me. Oh, so and, he um, So one day after practice, he and his buddies stopped me walking home and he sucker punched me. Uh, I rushed him, knocked him down, knelt on his shoulders and punched him about five times. Uh, and then uh, for the rest of the school year, uh, when he saw me, he had to call me Mr. Smith. So if you want me to hunt down this Derek guy for you, I'll get you an apology. I, I just wanted to come from him genuinely. <laughs> And, and any, any of those names that I just mentioned, if they ever watch this, there's going to be some people from my high school that are probably going to maybe send this video to them. And listen, I don't hate you, but think about it. If you have children now and the, what you did, like what you said, I had so much sadness and stress. I used to cry. And it really, Aww. from this day on, like it really bothers me. And I, uh, there was a few people, and when I got in high school, they stopped bullying me. They used to call me piss pot because I had horses. Listen to this. I moved, I moved in the fifth grade, and I had horses. My dad got me a horse. So I went in with my sneakers on to clean the stall in the morning. So the smell of the manure got on my sneakers. So I was getting in line, and Derek Sanders said, what's that smell? Oh, it's piss pot. So all that year, they call me piss pot, and I'd stand out by myself, and nobody would want to hang out with me. Poor me! Wah, wah. <laughs> so, I hope their their children. 
are not getting bullied because that would be karma. But I don't want that karma because I don't want any child to have to go through that. And it still happens and it still goes on and it's horrible. Um, and, and, and bullying is not, I look at this bullying and I see it and I'm like, I get so freaked out because I always thought it was just me. And I'm like, oh my God, they did worse and they got suspended. They got kicked out of school. Like, and they did worse to me, you know, like, and, um, I know I keep talking about it. This is like therapy, therapeutic. Uh, I don't know. I, I, I just, I know this and friends that are going to see this and be like, Oh no, she didn't miss thing. Just call out those people. Call them out. Uh, Deborah Jean, you're an angel. Thank you for apologizing to me. I appreciated it. I did cross that list out. The people I had to kill. <laughs> he wasn't on it. <laughs> Mike, how old were you when that guy? Came? How old were you when that happened? Uh, it would be. Uh, I just turned fourteen. Yeah. So you had to lay the law down. And you know what? And you know what's worse is when somebody comes up behind you, like, and just like. That's just like the coward, you know, a coward, you know. But anyways, that year, Derek Jean had to stay back because his father was the uh, uh, guidance counselor and he had gotten all bad grades. So his karma was to stay back. And, you know, when you're a kid and you stay back, how humiliating that is. So he may still be in the fifth grade. Probably. That's off to you, Derek. And you got all the karma you deserve. I want to just say, though, Derek, if you are watching, um, yeah, that'd be great if you send me an uh, instant messages and said sorry. I, I I wish that your kids are not being bullied. I, I hope they're not. And you probably, I hope you feel bad about it, or you just don't remember. Hmm. But anyways, on that note, <laughs> uh, Dr. Smith, thank you for listening to me. I appreciate it. I'm, I'm ready. Up. I'm ready. Forty $45,000 an hour. That's what I charge. Good Lord. Right. An hour and 36 minutes. <laughs> Here I am putting on my high, uh, my grade school, Marsh School, Marsh Grammar School was the worst experience of my life. Fifth grade, I I came from uh, way up more closer to Boston, the city, and then we moved in, like further into the suburbs to Methuen, and I that's my welcome. Within two weeks, I was. Um, bullied and I had no friends for a year. So that was great. I loved it. Taught me a valuable lesson though, you know. Uh, you know, uh, on that note, happy days are <laughs> here again. Yes. Uh, anyways, okay, so moving on an hour. Uh, wait, we're going on two. Oh, shoot. We're going on an hour already. Mike, thank you for listening to that, by the way. Imagine That's why I'm here. Now imagine after the show, and I'm going to let you guys know, and maybe I won't. Uh, if he does, I will. I'll probably cry if he does send me an apology. I'll, I'll probably freaking cry, Mike. I, I, I'll cry. Anyways, um, and then I'll, I'll put it on here. I'll put it on the picture. <laughs> and I'll be like, like the Indian with a trash commercial. Yes. He was actually an Italian. Indigenous, indigenous, indigenous person with he a trash. Sorry. Don't worry about don't worry about offending him. He was he was Italian. He was an Italian actor. He wasn't even like he wasn't, wasn't even. even yeah. I, he I, I, Iron Eyes Cody. No, he wasn't. He was a Vincente Malagublo or something. You know like what? That, yeah. You know you know who they really screwed over in Hollywood. The typecast that a lot was um, the guy. Uh, I can't. Why is my mind go blank? But then I can remember like Joni loves Charchi and whatever. Uh, but um, Young Guns. Um, he played Richie Valens. Um, Oh, Lou Diamond Phillips. Lou Diamond Phillips was like typecasted as every different type of ethnic, ethnic <laughs> yeah. background, maybe he's, right? Maybe he's Mexican. Maybe he's I Puerto mean, Rican, poor guy. Chinese. Yeah. I think one of one of the greatest movies I think was cool that they didn't typecast him was that horror movie where it was something about the occult, and he was in it. It was pretty good. My mind draws a blank. Oh, no. oh, Lou Diamond Phillips, yeah, Lou Diamond Phillips, Richie Valens, yeah, he did. That was an amazing movie. Great, La great, Bamba. Movie. yeah, great movie. Uh, next up on our list is the Top 100 Billboard uh, Songs of the Week, and uh, Matthew Drinnenberg, our own very amazing musician and awesome, funny guy. I love his picture of his vampire teeth when he was a kid. Funny. <laughs> Remember when we used to have those? You just go, and then the saliva would come. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> uh, he is going to go over the top 100 billboard and uh, and that this week uh, let's see he 
has picked one of my favorite songs. I swear it's like one of my favorite songs. I love it. Um, Matt is has a, his own YouTube channel. He is a musician. He has also put out an album of his own that, um, yeah, two, oh, two, I'm sorry, two. And um, he is, and, and with the sound quality on my laptop, if I had correct, something's up with my sound quality, which I'm going to fix because the headset, if you notice, I'm not wearing it because every time I listen to it, there's not a stereo sound. And I don't think Matt gets, it. that's good. But I don't think he gets as much as if I could fix the sound better for him because he sounds amazing. But I just, you know what I'm talking about. The sound. I do indeed. Um, and that's a whole different ball game. But Matt is doing the top 100 billboard this week. Let me take down Keith. Oh, there it is. Look at that, Matt. Matthew John Drinnenberg, Undiscovered. Undiscovered. And then he has another one called Keith. Those? I, I still have to you. send them to you. I haven't sent them to you. Yeah, yet. send me a, is it a CD. Yeah. I have a CD in my books where you book. I was listening to Michael Jackson earlier. Thriller. <laughs> All right. Uh, and okay, stop sealing the scene. Um, let's see. Matthew is going to be doing none other than Miss Carly Simon. My niece was named after her, Carly, Carly, Carly. Um, and also, he was married to um, the James other Taylor. amazing acoustic player. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, imagine they both live on Martha's Vineyard. How ironic! Right? Go figure. I'd just love to be a fly in the wall. And they're singing in the lake, just make it up a song. How does this song sound? I see far. I don't know. I'm crying. I don't know. What do you think about <laughs> this one? <laughs> like just two amazing, talented, genius musicians. And I'm going to pull up that Matt video and he is going to give us, you know, what's awesome about Matt. He just doesn't Wik Wikipedia stuff. Like I know a lot, but at times I want to make sure I get my facts right. So I check and look up and, you know, but Matt just knows he's an encyclopedia like you are with Michael's facts. It's like Matt's facts. He knows all all of mu music he and, he and, knows his music. and movies as well i mean he's so talented and um one of these days we have to have him on jaws live too with us as a guest he hasn't come on yet um so uh matt if you're watching um yeah you're gonna come on jaws live hopefully be live we'll have like five or six people i mean we can have him on there i'm downloading the video now but uh jaws live this week uh we don't know what we're gonna talk about this video is probably going to be up or after it, but um, I will be here, Michael, this Thursday. Be here, be square. But the next two Thursdays, I won't. So, okay. um, so you're gonna have to do that with uh, Jane or Keith or whoever. Um, Matt's downloading, so nobody does it better. Uh, if you ever seen Little Black Book, and uh, there was Brittany. Brittany Murphy, who I really, really liked. I thought she was such a diverse actress. Um, not only did she have amazing singing voice, she sang um, uh, Somebody to Love, uh, Freddie Mercury. Oh, in, uh, in uh, Happy Feet. Yeah, yeah. but she all, in Little Black Book, she's in one scene, she's singing Nobody Does It Better. If you go YouTube that, she's, it's just chills. And then she's so into like the working girl, the movie. Um, the, the song that she plays and the, the song in Working Girl, like she's obsessed with Carly Simon. So if you ever have you ever seen Black Little Black Book? It's a great little yeah. flick. Uh Juanita would like it. It's it, it's a chick flick slash like guy or girl, not really like a romance. It's just it's really it's a good, good story. It's called Little Black Book. Brittany Murphy and uh Carly Simon, she sings it. So here he is, Mr. Matthew Drinnenberg. Applause, applause, applause. <laughs> And he is going to talk about our number two song of the week. Nobody does it better. Hey guys, Matthew here with hey another song from back in the day. And this week, back in the day, this song was number two. It is uh, Nobody Does It Better by Carly Simon. Uh, lyrics by Carol Bear Sager and the music by Marvin Hamlish. Um, Sager and Hamlish both quite accomplished in music, uh, Sager's co-written numerous hit songs, uh, Arthur's Theme, um, Looking Through the Eyes of Love, uh, Midnight Blue, uh, Don't Cry Out Loud, 
uh, When I Need You, which was a big hit by Leo Sager uh, back when I was in high school. Um, I mean, those are just a small sampling, just a pinch of what she's done. Uh, as far as Hamlish goes, holy smokes, man, the dude's in his own galaxy. Uh, guy's got Oscars, Emmys, Grammys, Tonys, and won a Pulitzer Prize. One of only two people ever to pull off that feat, uh, winning all those awards and a Pulitzer. Um, sadly, he passed away in 2012. Um, but uh, dude's awesome. Uh, also wrote the, mu the music to uh, my favorite musical, uh, A Chorus Line. But uh, this is Nobody Does It Better by Carly Simon. <laughs> He's got some talent, and you know I, I showed you. Him, Thanks, man. Showed you, showed you his first CD cover. We're getting back to the Paul Williams we talked about earlier. Oh yeah, um, yeah, yeah. I had interviewed Paul Williams. No um, way. For the website, and um, 
He was very nice, and I had talked to him about Wait a minute, hold on. Uh, MediaMikes.com. Ladies and gentlemen, if you want to read yes. about amazing interviews, he actually has a Roy Scheider interview on there as well. Go ahead, Michael. I didn't mean to interrupt you, but oh. plug your website. And I talked to him about Matt and about how I always thought he was talented, and he writes brilliant songs. And Paul Williams asked me to send him a couple of Matt's songs. And he listened to him, and he sent me a very nice note back. Um, that he thought Matt was talented and he needed to pursue uh, whatever his dream was. And I told him that. And of course, he thought I was kidding. And I said, Matt, I don't know Paul Williams. He, he doesn't owe me any favors. He wouldn't have said it if it wasn't true. And uh, Matt moved uh, to Maine and uh, does well as a uh, singer songwriter and performs at festivals. So, uh, you know. Paul Williams, uh, and he did, he actually thanked Paul Williams in the in the liner notes on the on the CD. So now so you have to it all, me it all wraps up. It all wraps yeah. up. We started with Paul Williams, and we end with Paul Williams. So. That's awesome. Yeah. Uh that song is good, Matt. You know, I think that song, like, I love it. It's it. He's actually like the male. I like a male voice singing that. To be honest with you, like sometimes I was like, you know, a woman he hearing like a woman sing like a man song like um hard uh hard days uh rainy night from bob dylan and then edie Bukel sings oh, it yep. that's matt just did a freaking amazing job matt again i'm gonna get the uh the sound better i'm going to have an appointment soon talk about the sound and then how i can improve i'm gonna get a land layer like microphone that it comes in better you know because if you can hear the tinny sound i apologize like i said i'm getting better as i go all right mike Trying. Right. trying, trial and error. Trial and trying. Error. I ain't no Verna Fields, but I'm trying. I sure do have a pretty mouth. I'm <laughs> banana. <laughs> okay. Um. Lay. Anyways. Uh. That ends the show because we went crazy tonight. And um. Oh my God. What? Where'd that come from? <laughs> I didn't ask to play that. It's weird. Prince. When he does lost. cry. I would thought I was going out with Dr. Frankfurter again. Oh, Alexa. 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 <laughs> Alexa. <laughs> so like Catherine Cara. Alexa. Can you play Sweet Transvestite by Tim Curry? She's not. She's like playing whatever she wanted. I never asked her to play Prince. I swear on my mother's grave. She, she just like decided, like she decided to play Prince. Good choice though. Yeah. You want to just go with it? Oh, you want to hear? I want to hear. <laughs> Alexa. Alexa. I'm getting mad. Alexa. <laughs> Alexa. Play Sweet Transvestite by Tim Curry. Finally, I was getting annoyed. She's got a mind. Oh, can you believe she did that? What a bitch! What a biatch! Send her back, trade her in for Siri. That'll teach her. When you not, he thought you were the candy man. Candy man. Hey, everybody. <laughs> Thank you, everybody, for stopping by. Sing along as we go. Sing it back up. I'm one hell of a lover. I'm just a sweet transvestite. He's awesome in this. From transsexual. Legendary Transylvania. Ha <laughs> ha. You look like you broke, but it grew there. Or if you want something, this is We'll see you next week, Mike. Or we can have it. Uh, 1970. Great year. No, I'm sorry. We're doing 19. Uh, next week is 1966. Oh! Then 1970. So, yeah. Yeah. Stay where we are. All right, guys. Have a good one. We'll let you go. We'll be talking to monkeys. Don't worry.
Well, I've been caught with a flat foot on. Michael! How about, How about that? that? Well, baby. Everybody, good night, everybody. <laughs>